everybody. It's your boy Frost BBM, and today we're talking Unreal Engine 5.2 displacement maps and their return. Let's go. As y'all remember in a previous tutorial I created, I showed you displacement maps in 5.1, and uh, they took them away, but now they're back. So let's jump right into 5.2, and let's pretty much just redo what we did before and create some really cool textured grounds. You can also use other geometries. So, all right, real quick, we're gonna click right here, open up my project, let that load. Also, don't forget, you can utilize the uh, Quixel Mixer to make your textures first. There's a new thing that they have is the uh, uh, ODR maps, which are three channels. One is for uh, occlusion, uh, wait, yeah, occlusion, ORD maps, occlusion, roughness, and displacement. Sorry, the blue channel is your displacement. But if you're getting them from Quixel Mixer, then they'll still come in as a uh, displacement map. So now real quick, I started a new level. Let's throw some light on the subject, ultra dynamic sky, you know I love it. So now we're in landscape mode. Wait, let me see, okay. There's no material on here. Let me see what's going on. Where is my texture? Where's my food for that? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh man, I hate when I do this and I put stuff somewhere and then I forget where I put it. And now I'm stuck trying to find it. This is why organization is so important. Okay, found it, got it, boom. So we're going to take this texture and throw it in on our landscape. But wait, okay, first let me drop this down to 64 by 64 to make this area a lot smaller. And for whatever reason, it's not showing and it's not here. Our material does not exist. Ah, not sure what happened. They were in this folder and I made a material instance. So I'm not sure. Maybe I forgot to save it prior to closing it um, in my last session. So as you can see, see, I set everything up already, but for whatever reason, the textures, excuse me, for whatever reason, the textures are no longer inside of the blueprint. So we're going to have to fix this real quick. I'm going to just have to go back and import. Let's drag this over here. Sorry. Let's drag this over here. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, so now let me import the textures that we need. Find them in a the folder. They should be in my documents folder under materials and textures. Doc, materials and textures. Okay, tutorial. So here go all of our textures. We'll just open them, bring those in. And then now we pretty much just need to go back into our blueprint and then plug in all of the textures and their appropriate nodes. And we should be back on track. Sheesh. I really don't know what happened there. Like I literally set up everything and then now it's gone. Um, so hopefully that's not like a bug or something that we're gonna be encountering inside of 5.2. And as I stated before, remember I was talking about Quixel Mixer. Don't forget, you can make your own custom materials over there. And that's where I made mine. And that's why I have a displacement map opposed to the uh, o ORD map. Ord. Did you see that right there? Go back. Okay. So this is the ORD map. O is for occlusion. D is for your... Wait, O is for occlusion, R is for roughness, and D is for displacement, all on separate channels. So look, okay, wait, no. All right, that's your red channel. So this is your occlusion. That's your occlusion map. This is your green channel. That's your roughness. And this is your blue channel, which is your displacement. So if you ever have one of these maps, ORD, and you drop it into a displacement slot, underneath there, you'll be able to pick the channel, and then you'll select blue for displacement or whatever channel, you know, coincides with whatever uh, feature you need for your texture. 
So, all right, let's go back. Let's go back to our texture that we need here. Let's open this up. Open this back up. What is this? Okay, no, we don't need that. All right, so close that. All right, so now we're back inside of our blueprint for our, for our material. And what we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna click on each one. This is our base color. And there we go. Drop it right in, close it up, boom, hit this, hit that. And now we're back in business. This is our ambient occlusion. So same process, drop the tab, slide it in. This is our normal. Same thing. I'm going to repeat this process for each node just to bring everything back to life. That's our metallic. So that's, that's not even connected at the moment, as I'm seeing. So I'm going to have to reconnect that. And really quick, if you notice, in between the output node and this first group, I have my uh, dynamic landscape. Not whenever I'm making materials, because I know I use ultra dynamic sky and ultra dynamic weather, I uh, always throw those nodes in so that my my ground and trees and everything can always you know uh, accept the uh, the rain and the sand and the snow. All right, so what do we have here? We're lastly we're on our roughness map. Now we'll run our metallic. We still got to drop our metallic in, and then run that over to our output. And then we should hit compile and save, and that should complete everything. And as you can see, our material is in our viewfinder, right? It's nice and shiny. That metallic look is because of the water components or the layer inside of the uh, texture, which is now part of the material. So when we jump out, you'll, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Now that we have our material, we can move on to adding displacement and actually bringing this uh, material to life, these rectangles. Also, inside of, well, no, that's for your constant. That's in, that's in my, like, that's in my dynamic sky and weather. Stuff. Okay, so here we are. We're back inside. We got our material working, but ugh, this is disgusting. But as you can see, everything is here. The moss, the forest layer, the water layer, I, you know, everything that I created in Quitzel Mixer is right here, but it's just, as you can see, the tiling is disgusting and it's just not appealing at all. So what we want to do is, what am I doing? Oh, okay. So what we're going to do real quick here is I want to uh, block off an area just so when I make our, um, our rectangle or our plane with our, uh, displaced material. I have an area I want to, you know, show it off. I can move the light around and, and you know, I can control the, you know, control everything as I demonstrate to you guys how the displacement looks. And this is also where I'm going to shoot the, uh, the footage that you guys are obviously have seen in the beginning already, but during my process, I'm doing it afterwards. So yeah, you guys are actually moving forward in time. No, you guys went back in time. Did you guys go forward in time if you started at the beginning? I don't know. Okay, so look, now we're in here. So what we need to do is create a rectangle, right? Or some people call it a plane. It's right here at the top. You grab it, you slide it in. And obviously this is a small plane. So what I want to do is um, increase the size of it. You know, I want to make it larger in diameter. So let's see what we do. What's this? I think at the end, I end up going with like 450 by 450. And it was just like a really nice size. It was large enough to cover a, a, a nice size area. And it fit into my box perfectly. So you hit accept and now it creates your box. However, ah, I didn't put any material on here. <laughs> All right, I re I'm going to hit remesh. Wait, I should have did that after I put the material on. Don't judge me. I'm going to hit this accept button, even though I knew that I should have done that. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we want to displace the, the map, right? We're going to displace the map. None, even if we have a texture on it or not, it doesn't really matter. But because I just want you guys to see how it's supposed to look. Let me go in here and throw this material on like I was supposed to do in the first place. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I need to organize. Let's go. All right, so here's our texture. 
let's drop it on to our rectangle. And as you can see, since the rectangle is larger, this single tile is way larger than those ugly tiles, you know, small tiles that are on the ground when you do a regular landscape. So you already see the advantage of this. I'm gonna bring it down some. So when I do the uh, displacement, you can get a good view and see the difference between the two. I mean, outside of what is already obvious. So now, let me remesh this again. And just hit accept, it's gonna do its thing. And now, <laughs> It's time to go crazy. You already know. You hit this place. We want to drop this down to a texture 2D. And from here, now here's your slot for your displacement map. And we have our displacement map. So you just want to take that displacement map and toss it right into that slot. Now, if you were to use that other map, do you see that slot right there? That's where your red, green, and blue channels are if you needed to use an ORD map. The blue channel is displacement, remember. So here we go. I dropped the displacement map in and you can already see, oh, this looks beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You guys, I know you guys are ready to take your productions to the next level and make your renders look crazy. Right here, you can uh, determine how much displacement you want. Me, I increased it a little bit. I want those logs to be a bit more profound. I hate when I do this. Slow, slow, slow. Okay, here we go. You can really see the, you know, I don't even know what to call it, like the beauty of the displacement maps. And like I said, you can also take your map, find it in the browser, right click on it and enable Nanite. You know, so this even goes a step further. Put some little ground elements in, you know, do your thing, man. It's just as simple as that. It's as simple as that for getting started. We'll get into advanced uh, features and techniques in a little bit. But for right now, man, increase the visual, uh, increase the aesthetic quality of your renders by adding displacement. This works on walls. This works on, if you look on the left hand, if you look on the top side on the left, where we got the rectangle from, you can add displacement to any of those shapes. So let's say you wanted to make a pole where that's painted with the paint chipped off. Use a cylinder, put the material on it, add the displacement, and now you have a pole or a column, like a concrete column stairs if you want your stairs to be concrete stairs with the you know with the lines in them and everything use a stair uh shape then you just go crazy experiment that's what i do and as you can see as i'm moving the light around remember i, I made this this block off you can see the shadows as i move the light from one side to the opposite how they shift from one side of whatever is displaced to the other man this is amazing this is gorgeous this is gorgeous. Like this makes making just nature environments super fun and, and appealing. They snapped on 5.2. I won't even lie. I'm about to get on a procedural generation. So that'll be the next thing that I'm going to be working on for you guys. And then I have another thing that I just caught on to that you guys are going to love. I mean, you're going to absolutely love it. Just give me a minute to get the hang of it. Make sure I got my terminology and all my links and everything correct. And then I'm going to be bringing you guys some heat. I'm back. I know I was gone for a minute, but the but the wait is over. We back to it, baby. Let's go. Unreal Engine, iClone 8, CC4, I am Visual.